Hey, so have you ever been hungover? Are you hungover now? You don't have to tell me, but uh, today's episode is all about how hangovers work. Now we're all familiar with the symptoms. Even if you don't drink, you've seen TV or film and we know that people have horrible headaches. Some people have tremors. They're all dehydrated. They have fatigue, restlessness, anxiety, trouble getting proper sleep. The list goes on. But what actually happens? What thing makes alcohol so dastardly that it would turn a wonderful Saturday night into a horrible Sunday morning? Hangover is the street name for the more formal term, basalgia. So what happens when you drink alcohol, one thing that occurs is that your pituitary gland stops producing something called vasopressin. Now vasopressin is an antidiuretic hormone. Think of it like if your body and the crazy party you're at are a road trip, vasopressin is like the dad in the car who says no, nobody gets out to pee until we hit Orlando. Oh, but when you drink alcohol, the vasopressin is gone. It's a deadbeat dad. So what are the numbers exactly? Well, if you ingest 250 milliliters of alcohol, your body will expel 800 to 1,000 milliliters of liquid. That's one to four times more liquid lost than gained. One of the big symptoms of a hangover is dehydration, right? Because there's a massive water shortage in your body, all your other organs sort of start betraying each other and they become water thieves, you know, like in uh, Mad Max. And they're stealing water from your brain. What does this do? It makes your brain shrink. And when it shrinks, then it starts pulling on the membrane inside your skull that attaches your brain to your skull. So that headache is the result of physical brain pain. During drinking, your body produces something more toxic or more dangerous than alcohol. It's a character called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is fortunately only gonna be in your body for a small amount of time if you're drinking moderately. And that's because your liver combines this toxin with an enzyme called acetaldehyde dehydrogenase and a substance called glutathione. When you drink more booze, when you drink heavily, your liver runs out of glutathione and this acetaldehyde is able to accrete and it causes these nasty symptoms. And in my opinion, some of the worst symptoms of a hangover, which would be nausea and vomiting. Additionally, alcohol promotes the secretion of hydrochloric acid. What this means is that your body is producing more and more acid and at some point, the cells in your body say, hey, this, this booze thing that you've turned us into is out of control. Get these guys out of here and then boom, they get ejected out of the front door the same way that a lush would get kicked out of a sleazy bar. <laughs> but the door is your mouth and the bar is your stomach. You get it, it's gross, it's vomiting. You probably also heard the idea that not all booze is created equally. And that's true, and that applies to hangover potential as well. This goes back to a thing called congeners. See, congeners are a byproduct of the fermentation process of different kinds of alcohol. And some sorts of alcohol have uh, many more impurities or congeners than other types. As a general rule, what you can tell is that a uh, red wine or a darker liquor like brandy, whiskey, bourbon, tequila, these would tend to have more impurities, more congeners, and they'll lead to an increased likelihood of a more severe hangover. The ones that have fewer congeners are gonna be stuff like white wine or vodka, these more clear, light liquors. Uh, so that's it. So if you're hungover right now and you're watching this, that's what's going on inside of your body. Uh, your next question is probably how to cure a hangover. How do I stop this from ever happening again? I never want to see the sunlight. I get it. It turns out that hangovers are easier to prevent than they are to remedy. Now, of course, the easiest way to prevent a hangover is to drink in moderation or not drink alcohol at all and you have to be conscious of the various factors applying to you as an individual that will increase or decrease the likelihood of your hangover and the severity of it if you have one. These are factors like your body weight, your gender, your genetic disposition, and so on. Now, as for hangover remedies, 
we've been hearing a lot of things that might be old wives tales, a lot of things that might have science behind them. You've heard of this stuff like coffee and eggs or a greasy bacon sandwich. And you've heard of weirder stuff, you know, like gargling with some godforsaken concoction or the hair of the dog and stuff. But which of those are actually real and which of those are bunk? We'd love to follow this up in another episode and we'd also like to hear your ideas. So go ahead and subscribe, click like, leave us your uh, foolproof hangover cure in the comments below. It might end up on our next episode and we'll see you then. <music>